only mode. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Greg Monroe with Longsight. Uh, I'm going to be your moderator here today. Uh, people should know by now we're recording the sessions and that uh, everybody will be, all the attendees are in mute mode. Um, if you need to ask a question, uh, you should be able to use the questions panel and uh, we'll try to get to them. I believe we're going to try to wait and do them until the end uh, of the session there. Um, so anyway, uh, this session is Lessons Learned, teaching 80 people of various technology skill levels how to care for a bunch of diabetic kids. And our presenter is uh, Kara Stiles. Uh, Kara is the founder of Brutus Partners, uh, who's a uh, supplier of a bunch of Sakai training services and design services and other things. I'll let her explain more about that if she wants to. Uh, you know, she's assisted in the implementation and training and support of Sakai for at least 45 colleges, universities, 12K districts, K-12 districts, uh, military uh, schoolhouses, nonprofits, and other organizations. So, well, yeah, let me uh, make her the presenter and get started here. Thanks, Greg. One second. Okay, I'm going to share the first slide with everybody and i um, just going to check in, Greg, with you real quickly to make sure that um, you're able to see uh, my computer screen. Yes, we are. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, I actually um, have this, had this presentation at the um, Sakai conference, but I changed it a little bit because um, it sort of ran on its own at the Sakai conference, and now, um, now I'm actually going to be speaking to it. So um, I'm going to just spend a little bit of time on my slides, and then uh, for most of this presentation, I'm going to show you the actual course uh, that, that these slides kind of talk about. So uh, first, uh, I'm going to have us take a look at the agenda. So we're going to talk briefly about uh, what the heck Camp ASDA is and what the heck Lesson Cloud is. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what the challenges were that kind of led to uh, the Diabetes Association and Brutus Partners collaborating together to create uh, an online course. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, my experience as the course owner. Um, and, and then I'll share with you some of the feedback that uh, we received about the course. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about some things that I would probably do a little bit differently. Um, and I'm actually going to have the chance to do some things differently because uh, we're going to be doing this again next year at Camp ASDA. So uh, just real briefly, Camp ASDA is a, a summer camp. It's a week-long summer camp in Arizona. Um, I'm from Arizona, and that's why I've been involved in it. Um, I'm in Wisconsin now, but I've been involved with Camp ASDA for like the last 20-some years or so. And uh, we essentially have a bunch of staff members uh, who are supposed to be trained in diabetes, and those staff members are in charge of uh, medical care as well as activities and events and so forth for a whole bunch of uh, type 1 diabetic campers um, from ages 8 to 16. So, I mean, it's pretty typical. Um, it's a sleepover camp for kids, and uh, the goal is to help the campers at least for a week kind of feel like I don't like saying the word normal, so I use the word pancreatypical. Um, so uh, we get the campers to feel like, you know, non-diabetic kids for a week. Of course, they are diabetic, so they have to be closely monitored, and you have to make sure that they're safe and that their blood sugars don't go too high and too low, and and that the challenge is great enough, I think, as, um, you know, being an individual with diabetes, I can't imagine or couldn't imagine how hard it must be for medical staff members to um, to uh, figure out how to manage diabetes in, in about eight diabetic children apiece, um, which, is, which is kind of how uh, it works at Camp ASDA. So I'm just showing off some slides of uh, campers taking insulin and doing insulin pumps. And there's all sorts of cool little gadgets now that uh, uh, kids and adults can use to manage their diabetes, which is great 
for, for them, but it also makes it a little bit harder, I think, for medical care providers to know exactly what to do in any given situation because every kid's got something different, right? Some kind of insulin pump or maybe they're taking insulin shots or maybe they use a pen needle and, and they all have different blood sugar testing meters and, and so um, it can be a little bit challenging. Uh, so that's kind of what Camp ASDA is. Um, there's a bunch of staff members and there's a bunch of diabetic kids and somehow all the diabetic kids have to make it through camp alive uh, and without too many problems. <laughs> so let me talk just briefly about what Lesson Cloud is. Uh, Lesson Cloud is actually a hosted uh, installation of Sakai that uh, Brutus Partners, my company, um, manages. And uh, it actually started because of uh, this need from the Diabetes Association. They said, look, we want to teach a course online um, because we have this problem where we cannot get 80 medical staff members into a room at the same time to do a full eight-hour training session because they all have like jobs and stuff outside of camp. So, I mean, it was nearly impossible. So they said, let's do this training online. And um, so I said, well, I, I know Sakai, so maybe I can help you uh, help you uh, do this training course in Sakai. So we looked into uh, hosting a Sakai implementation for the Diabetes Association. And uh, for those of you who have implemented Sakai or are hosting Sakai, you probably know that um, you know it's it's not. It's not necessarily cheap, and it's not necessarily free, though it is open source. There's a lot of work involved in getting Sakai up and running. So uh, Bruce Partners created Lesson Cloud, and what it is is um, it's an instance of Sakai that's shared by smaller organizations. So uh, for folks who need to just teach like one course for maybe a couple of months, they can uh, come use Lesson Cloud, and then when they're done, they can stop using Lesson Cloud, and that's kind of how that works. So uh, we set up Lesson Cloud. Brutus Partners set up Lesson Cloud, and uh, then we discovered, well, we, you know, now that we want to do this online course, we want to uh, create an online course for the staff members at this diabetes camp. Um, how are we going to teach them all the stuff that they have to know? They they have to know a lot of stuff. Um, and as I said before, scheduling the classroom training was was really hard. So we um, we did end up building a course in Lesson Cloud. It was called uh, Camp as the Staff Training. And for the most part, we used uh, Sakai's Lesson Builder to deliver the content. We used a bunch of other tools within Sakai to deliver content and uh, assessments and evaluations and so forth. But from at least the student perspective, all they saw was um, you know, an outline of training pages and, and a way to access those pages. So um, my next slide just kind of lists the different uh, tools that we used inside of Lesson Cloud or inside of Sakai uh, to teach that course. So I'm going to toggle over to my uh, Lesson Cloud instance and show you what that course looks like. So I'm actually logging in to the Camp as the staff training from the student perspective. So as you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, at least from the student perspective, it looks like I'm using very few tools. Uh, this all staff training um, item is an instance of Lesson Builder, and it's got a bunch of sub-pages on it. And then we've also got uh, an emergency protocol training page with some more Lesson Builder subpages on it. And we've got one last Lesson Builder page that actually just has a link to uh, the course evaluation. So I'm actually using, we used Samigo for, or uh, I should say tests and quizzes, Sakai tests and quizzes, to administer the course evaluation. However, we linked to that very course evaluation from uh, lesson Builder because it just, we thought, made it easier uh, for the users to, to access it instead of having to go through the tests and quizzes tool. So we had um, multiple top-level Lesson Builder pages. Uh, there were three, in fact. And then on the Lesson Builder pages, on each Lesson Builder page, we had some sub-pages. And we also had some uh, second-level and third-level sub-pages, and we embedded some subpages 
um, inside of the content, which turns out is not the best idea, because <laughs> uh, we learned that a lot of folks either just skipped these things or they clicked into the um, the subpage or the third level subpage and they didn't see the breadcrumb trail and they they really didn't quite understand where they were supposed to go uh, next and the next button did not always bring the users back to the next item in the sequence so we screwed up a little in terms of organizing the content and if I had to do it over again I would kind of flatten out all of the training and maybe use uh, Maybe maybe put all the subpages on one top level lesson builder page, and um, you know use use uh, text headers to organize the content. But uh, most of the users were able to get through uh, the content. Uh, we used embedded resources, as you can see here in the left hand navigation area. There. Uh, appears to be no resources tool. Uh, there is, in fact, a resources tool in this course. It's just that we use the uh, page order helper to hide the resources tool. And so um, on this particular module, we've actually embedded a PDF onto a lesson builder page. And this PDF is actually hiding in Sakai resources. But of course, it, it just looks like it's part of the training because we embedded it uh, right on the page. We also had a bunch of videos that we needed to share with folks. So uh, there was a, a video about what Camp ASDA is, uh, and that was a video that was hosted on Vimeo. Uh, we also had some videos uh, that were hosted on YouTube. So let's see, I could show you a YouTube video. So we had um, some helpful YouTube videos about how to uh, deal with emergency situations and so forth. So. Um, we also used some of the um, tools within the rich text editor, specifically the um, MathML plugin. So we were able to create some equations. So of course, you know, if you're teaching a bunch of, of, of staff members how to deal with diabetic kids and blood sugars and insulin, and you're dealing with a lot of numbers and you're having to figure out most of the time uh, how much insulin you are supposed to to give a camper, and so that uh, is, is, or can sometimes be pretty complicated, but um, with the help of MathML, we were able to create some example equations and, uh, and uh, instructional text, and then at the end of pretty much every page, we use the Lesson Builder's question function. So there's a little, um, for those of you who have used Lesson Builder before, you may know what I'm talking about. There's an option to add a question onto a Lesson Builder page. And so we added uh, little quiz questions onto nearly every page. And in fact, we set up these quiz questions so that if the uh, user got the question right, they got one point. And these questions actually got automatically sent to the gradebook, which we also used, but we called the gradebook scores because uh, we had a note on the home page that you know in order to uh, in order to earn a passing grade, you had to get at least 96 percent. So a user would be allowed to see their score, and they could also see uh, what they got on each specific question if that's if they wanted to get into that much detail. Uh, we had a lot of text and we had uh, some tables. We had a hard time trying to figure out how to share with folks exactly how they were supposed to do their job. Um, you know, folks at a camp like this have different levels of skill in terms of caring for kids with diabetes. Uh, some of them are medical professionals, some of them are um, emergency uh, technicians, some of them are paramedics. And some of them are just diabetics who know about diabetes with, and they don't have any other medical training. So it was important not to just uh, describe to the individuals who, who have each role how to do their job, but it was also important to us to share with everybody what everyone else's responsibilities were so that uh, nobody tried to you know, step on any toes, uh, as it were. Uh, like I said, we used Gradebook 2 uh, for uh, for scoring, and everyone had to get at least 80%. Um, the users would be allowed to access their scores if they wanted to by clicking the scores link. Um, and we use tests and quizzes, like I said before, for uh, the course evaluation. Um, there was one area where uh, the students were actually able to add comments. So there was a 
discussions and comments and questions section. And uh, for the most part, I think folks tended to use this page just to provide some feedback. Even though they, they had a course evaluation section and they could submit a formal evaluation, they just felt like they wanted to share additional information, I guess, and, and use the discussion and questions and comments areas for that. Uh, so let me talk about some of the lessons that um, we learned about or after after we delivered this course. Uh, the first thing that I learned really was uh, that you know while I thought these users would be able to get through the course on their own because it was designed to be completely self-paced without any instructor involvement, uh, turns out uh, even in self-paced courses, instructors have to uh, deal with uh, tech support. Um, students are going to have problems. They're going to be confused. And so even if a course is self-paced, the instructors have to provide a lot of tech support. And uh, what I ended up doing was um, I ended up getting a lot of emails, a lot of individual emails from folks, and they were all asking the same question. And so um, I kind of have to find a way next time to figure out how to cause that to not happen. Uh, I also noticed that uh, sometimes students did not even like log in and start the training until the very last minute. Uh, and for those who were new, this training was supposed to take between five and 15 hours. So uh, that was kind of hard because I really felt like, you know, I sent a bunch of emails out ahead of time announcing the training and making sure everyone had a login and, and there was still a little bit of pestering going on to get the folks to complete the, uh, the course on time. Um, what I really noticed uh, was that uh, folks who were brand new to online learning just could not cope with embedded pages. Uh, I know I said this before, uh, but I, I embedded a bunch of pages um, inside of the subpages. And once folks got like a couple of clicks deep into the subpages of the subpages, they started to get confused about what they were supposed to do next. And a lot of them ignored the subpages of the subpages. And there were questions that were supposed to be scored on those subpages. So they actually missed a couple of questions only because they didn't see them. So I would really uh, probably flatten that out quite a bit uh, next time. Uh, even though there was a scores area in this course where the students could click their score. And I even renamed it score uh, so, so, uh, so we could avoid confusion. Um, I still got a lot of emails uh, from folks asking, what's my score? What's my score? What's my score? And the Diabetes Association didn't have anybody um, on their end designated to like deal with all of these questions. And since Brutus Partners was delivering the course. Essentially, uh, we were responsible for supporting the students who were taking the course. So there were a lot of emails going back and forth about scores. And then you know some of them wanted to know why they didn't get an 80%. And then I would have to log in. And I would have to super user in as that user. And then I would have to search around and try and figure out which questions they uh, missed or didn't answer, and then provide that feedback to them. And uh, that that was a little bit time consuming. I think next time, instead of embedding the Lesson Builder quiz questions, or at least instead of using the Lesson Builder quiz questions as uh, sort of high stakes graded uh, questions, I would probably just use them as sort of like a knowledge check or a progress check, and instead have the actual scoring done inside of the Tests and Quizzes tool within like a course um, final or or uh, yeah, final course exam or something like that. Um, and that is, in fact, some of the feedback that I got from folks who had been to camp for a number of years. And they kind of already knew how to do the job. And they said, you know, I really didn't need to see all of this information because I know it. So I would have rather just skipped to the test. And um, the ADA felt like that was fine for them to do that. We didn't provide a way for them to do that. So they had to search through and look through all of the pages and read through all of the pages and answer all of the questions. And they really felt like they could have saved a lot of time if they'd been given the opportunity to take the test uh, ahead of time. Uh, some folks also said it was really hard to know where you left off. So uh, like they would, um, the users would you know, maybe finish a couple of modules and then they would you know, go off and do something else and leave the computer and then they'd come back and 
and they weren't really sure where they had been. And I know that Lesson Builder provides a feature where you can mark an item as required. And as long as you do that without uh, making anything else a prerequisite, Lesson Builder does a really nice job of placing check marks next to all of the items that you've actually looked at. So uh, in terms of letting the students know how well they've been progressing through these materials, I would use Lesson Builder uh, required function to, to cause that to happen for them. So those were at least some of the lessons uh, we learned. And uh, I think we are, of course, going to make some changes to this course for next year. Uh, but overall, we got uh, the feedback that we got was mostly positive. I, uh, some folks said things like, um, you know, I, I've been coming to this camp for years, and I had no idea about like half of this stuff. So, so thanks for you know giving this to us. And I also think it was really good for folks um, because they said uh, they said it was nice that you know no matter what your role was, everyone kind of got the same training, and they got to know or you know they each got to see the same stuff. So uh, we didn't target individuals or groups with tra you know role specific training, we just gave everyone the same training. And I was kind of worried about how, how that was going to work, especially with some of those, uh, those math equations, because non-medical staff members don't always like uh, doing math equations. But they, they really seem to cope pretty well with that. So uh, I think we'll do that again next year. Uh, and then, of course, here's the constructive uh, feedback. They, uh, all of the things that I said before about some of the lessons that we learned um, are, were all included in the, in the various pieces of constructive feedback. So it was good to get that feedback because um, that only helps us, I think, improve things for, for next year. We had some pretty good results uh, as a result of the online training or moving the classroom training that we used to have into an online format. Uh, the camp director was pretty pleased because she did not have to try to work around everyone's schedules and gather 80 people in a room for an entire day. And, uh, we, and I don't know if this is an incidental uh, result or not, but this year, uh, not one camper had a diabetic seizure. And I, I'm sad to say that it's not always true every year. Somebody, somebody usually does have a diabetic seizure, but that did not happen this year. Um, like I said, I cannot, I cannot say that this had anything to do with the training. It could have just been incidental. But as the years go on, we'll see how many seizures we have and maybe compare that to, uh, to uh, how well we did before we moved the training online and see if, see if this is actually um, uh, causing better care, better diabetes care. So uh, we had a bunch of staff members who got trained. I, I said 80 people at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, they're, not everybody actually took the course. Um, and it was interesting, those who didn't take the course seemed quite confused uh, on the first couple of days about what they were supposed to do. But uh, we, did, we did train a bunch of staff members on, on all of these fun and interesting things in terms of caring for diabetic kids. So uh, I think I'm mostly done talking and showing the course. Um, so before I uh, check in with Greg for questions, I'd like to invite everyone to a webinar that Brutus Partners is giving on December 4th. It's uh, playing SCORM in Sakai. And I'd also encourage you to consider or consider telling your friends about attending uh, the Sakai Winter Boot Camp that starts December 16th and ends in the middle of January. It's a full certificate course on how to build and manage a course using Sakai. So it's mostly for Sakai newbies. Uh, so if you are very experienced with Sakai, boot camp is not for you. But if you're new, then uh, please feel free to attend. And of course, uh, you can find more information about either of these events by going to uh, BrutusPartners.com. So I think I have gone for about 25 minutes or so. So I'm going to stop talking and check in with Greg to see if there are any questions. Greg? Yeah, currently no, but you know, it's Friday afternoon late, so I ask people to, to wake up from their mid-afternoon stupor and see if there's That's any questions. That's all right. If they don't have any questions, I don't always get questions when I do presentations. I think it just means that everyone understood everything I had to say the first time. So this is offered what once a year for the students for the kids. Yes, um, in Arizona it's just one week a year, and um, there's like about 230 kids. So 
they have to hurry up and train the staff members, and they do a bunch of work for an entire week, and then they're done for the rest of the year. Do people get a, uh, a certificate of achievement for this? Uh, no. I mean, we require them to uh, take the training, but they don't really get anything as a result. I suppose we could uh, give them a certificate for getting a passing score, but um, I'm afraid for those uh, participants who uh, have a lot of experience going to the diabetic camp year after year, it, it probably wouldn't mean too much to them <laughs> to get a certificate about that. Okay, we have a question on uh, how did you embed the quiz question in a page, and did you say that it will automatically update on their score? Yeah, so uh, I used Lesson Builder to put the quiz question on a page. Why don't I just um, log out of my student ID and log in as an instructor? As so first, you have to add the gradebook tool to your course. And then, if you want to create a question inside of the lessons tool, you uh, go to your course and then click on Lesson Builder or Lessons, or in, in Lesson Cloud, we actually call it Lesson Pages. Uh, and then if you select the Add Content function, there's an Add Question button. And there's a little tiny box that says Grade This Question. And so for each question we created, uh, we, we made each question worth one point, And there were, I think, 20 or 25 questions total. So it looks kind of like this. And you can select what the correct answer is. And then, whoops, click Save. And then that, um, once the students start uh, taking the questions, oh, let's be set to a valid number. Well, I'm getting yelled at. Oh, title. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. I put the number of points in the wrong field. And there it is. So now, if I click the correct answer and submit, I hope that was the correct answer, then that, um, that submission just automatically goes into my gradebook. And it doesn't matter whether you use gradebook one or gradebook two. Uh, it'll get pushed to both of them. As you can see here, there's the gradebook item. Uh, this is gradebook one. And there's the little note that the uh, item is coming from Lesson Builder. So that's how that's done. Yeah. And so this is this is Sakai 10, right? This is kind of an in-between uh, Sakai uh, 2.9 and Sakai 10. Okay. But the Lesson Builder functions um, are, are all the latest version of Lesson Builder. So it's the Sakai 10 version of Lesson Builder in Sakai 2.9 if that makes any sense. Okay, yeah, because there were follow-up questions was we were on Sakai 2.92, and the instance of lesson builder was slightly different. So that's yeah, you, they, that's they redid method. the interface, the user interface a little bit of, for Sakai 10. Yeah. So this was the first year. Next year, are you going to have, like, a two variations or refresher course, or do people have to take the whole thing over to get recertified? Um, well, next year we're going to have uh, like a pretest, which is basically going to be the same thing as a final, and so people will be able to just jump right to the final. Uh, but for any new stuff, we'll we're for any new content or any new policies, we're going to have to separate that out from the regular training somehow. Because yes, you're right. I mean, all of the folks who came to camp this year learned all of this great stuff, but then next year they don't need to learn it all again, except for the new stuff. So we'll have to figure out how to separate that out. Yeah, or at least, you know, with the pre-test, you can just verify they remember what they learned. Right. OK. Any other questions? Great. Well, it sounds like we're done early. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, I'll put my contact information on the screen in case anybody has any uh, or thinks of any more questions after, after we hang up. But um, I, think, I think we can 
get a nice, uh, nice long break uh, since we're done about 15 minutes early. So thank you, everybody, for coming. And, uh, well, perhaps I'll see you again sometime. And thank you, Greg, for moderating. I appreciate it. No problem. Well, everyone have a good weekend. Yep. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.